do? Subtract 15 on both sides. Subtract 15. You got to pay attention. The fraction are coming. <coughs> right? So we're going to end up with y minus 15 equal 12 x squared and us 29x. Right? So pass the good. So this should tell you that we have some issues because A is not 1, right? Mm -hmm. So we cannot complete this square when A is not 1. So we're going to factor it out. Take it out. So you will end up with what inside the parentheses? That's going to be x squared. Be careful. The only way you can get that is to have 29 over 12. So when you do the distributive property, you can end up with 12 x squared and the 20, the 12 will cancel each other, you end up with 29. Now A is one, or we factor the A out. This is your new B. Then we can start using the completely square method. So we can come back here, all right? So you need to pay attention. This is your B term. You got the 29 over 12. This is the fraction, you will take that. And this always divide by what? Two. By two. Put yeah. this two over one. We have you formally two. School. You keep, you change, and you play. So we we'll have we got it twenty nine over twelve multiplied by one half. So you will end up with negative twenty nine over. 24. And this is the one that's going to be squared. So we're going to keep that as our reference. So calculate it. At least I know what 24 squared is. It's about 76. But it's 20, you got everything 29 squared. It's from 841. So that's what we are supposed to add on this side. You know, at 841, those are huge numbers, number 576. Now, this is where many of your issues will not come up. It's a P that you add this, right? Be careful that only true when A is 1. A is not 1. So if you were to do distributive property, you will have to multiply this by that. That's what you add. So you must take 12. Multiply by that, then that's what you add on that side, then you will have to add it on the other side. So let's find out what, what we add on that side. That will be 12 times 841 over 576. 12 should go into 576 how many times? What is it? 48. So that's what we add. We add 8. 41 over 48, then that's what we need to add on the other side. So just put this over 1, then we're going to add 8, 41 over 48. Now more fraction coming. We have to simplify that. Make sense? So we'll have y minus 15 over 1 plus 8, 41 over 48, and is equal. So let's simplify that. This is a mess. Okay? We need to have a common denominator. Anybody? What will be your common denominator on that side? Then we multiply this by 48, and multiply this by 48. You see on that side, so we'll have y minus what is negative 15, 7, 20 over 48 plus 8, 41 over 48. Now we can combine it, right? And this women has 12 times something squared. Right? Remember that. Your reference, these guys, that's what's going inside the parentheses. So that will be x minus 29 over 
24 and u squared. Remember this become a perfect straight binomial. So let's go here. We have negative 720 plus 841. I'll give you y plus what? Calculate that, people. 121 over 48 is equal to 12 times x minus 29 over 24 squared. Now, this is your objective. Now, we almost there to put our equation in that form. So before we go there, since we want to find the x intercept, we're going to re rewrite that expression again. That will help you to solve for y. All right? Here, when you're solving for your x intercept, y is 0, right? So we we'll end up with 12 time x minus 29 over 24 is equal to 121 over 48. That's, we'll use that to find our x intercept. Now let's solve for y on that side. We want y to be by itself in your equation with the vertex form. What will you do? Subtract. You subtract 121 over 48. Then your equation will be in vertex form. That should be your objective. So, y equals 12, y equals 12 parentheses x minus 29 over 24 squared minus 121 over 48. 48. Now if they ask you what is the vertex of this equation, what, how will you find the vertex? So, take um I know but I don't know um, don't, know. don't remember I don't know this is your it. H this is your K how you are the vertex you take your, your H you flip the sign you flip the all we take the opposite of that right this will be 29 over 24, 24 comma uh, negative 120 Negative 121 over 48 and what this inside parentheses. This is your vertex. Those are not pretty numbers. Fraction, right? And this is one of your objective, identify the vertex. The second part here we're gonna solve for x. Right? How do you cancel the 12? We divide both sides by 12. Divide this by 12 over 1. More fraction coming again. So this can sell each other out. As with me. So we end up with x minus 29 over 24. And this should be squared. Equal. Again, we're going to keep and we're going to flip. Right? So this can so multiply by 1 half. And this is going to become 121 over, that was it, over what? We know. That was 12, right? 1 over 12, right? Mm -hmm. Take 48 multiplied by 12. 576. Yeah, that's beautiful. Remember we said 576 earlier? Yes. That's a perfect square. Then. We go on step four, we take square root of this side. Good. And we'll end up with x minus 29 over 24 is equal to plus or minus. You should know what square root of 121 is? That's 11. And we know what square root of 576 is? 24. Now, we ready to solve for x by doing what? You add 29 over 24 on this side. That's easy one. Then you'll have x equal 29 over 24 plus or minus 11 over 24. Get to answer. That would be 29 plus 11 over 
24, that will give you 1. What is the other one? 29 minus, 29 minus 11, 11 over 24. Let's figure it out. What is 29 plus 11? That will give you 40 over 24. But what is the greatest common factor? 40 and 44. The greatest common factor is? 8. eight. Simplify by 8. That will give you what? 5 over 10. Third comma zero. zero. That's one of the x intercepts. I will find the other one. Twenty nine minus eleven. What is that? Eighteen over twenty four. What is the greatest common factor? Six. Six. And this one, that that six that will give you what? Three fourth comma zero. zero. So we find the vertex. Those are the two x intercepts. If you go back to the original equation, right? What are, what would have been your y intercept? Zero comma c, so it's zero comma fifteen. Zero fifteen. Then you ready to graph that baby? And I'm telling you, it's not easy, especially those of you who have issued with fractions. So that's what you should do. So. In order to get this kind of problem, guys, you need to have your foundation, right? This we this problem at least we deal with complex fraction at least twice. Yes, if you don't remember the rules of complex fraction, you're not gonna get there. So it's based on your practice, only the basis that will get you there.